Okay, in today's video, I want to talk about some of the red flags that you may experience or start to notice or should be noticing if you're in active recovery and you start doing these things that you're probably headed down a bad road, that you're headed in the wrong direction. You potentially are going towards a relapse or a setback, if you want to call it that. Some of these things um, that I've discussed with clients today that have come up and things that I also struggled with in my own recovery that became like really obvious, call them red flags if you want, things or behaviors that would, I'd sort of revert back to unintentionally thinking that they were harmless or thinking it's okay, I'm far enough along that this is, this is innocent, this isn't gonna be a big deal. Um, one of those things would be starting to take pictures again of yourself. This was a huge problem for me before recovery. I would take so many selfies and pictures of my body before I started recovery that it was really quite a compulsion for me. And I never posted them online. No one ever saw them. They were just in my camera roll and I would just look at them and I'd obsess over them and I'd compare them to pictures from the day before. And it was just like so much of my time was consumed with taking pictures and then analyzing the pictures. And so when I was in recovery, a few months into recovery, I started noticing that I was justifying me taking pictures again. And it was like, no, no, I just wanna see my progress. I'm just trying to mark, you know, how much progress I've made in the last few months. And within a matter of days, all of a sudden I was taking pictures every, get, every day again. And I was comparing if I looked different from the day before. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm going right back down that same direction. And all of a sudden I'm focusing so much more on my body. And so if that's you listening and you're one of those people, who are starting to take pictures again or you have them for some time but you're in recovery you got to stop now moving like beyond recovery and just real life being being recovered i don't stand in front of the mirror and just take pictures of myself i don't take selfies i don't analyze pictures of me from yesterday to today um am i in pictures with my family or friends or just naturally as pictures come up yes of course but it's not something that I'm dissecting every single part of my body anymore. So that would be a huge red flag if you're doing that. Um, another one would be playing it just a little bit safe when you go out to eat. So looking at the menu and being like, oh, you know, three or four things look really good. One of those things being a bit safer, but also really good and quite enjoyable. But really the thing I want is the scariest thing and then you start compromising and you kind of just play it safe and you get that thing you know you really like that happens to be a little bit safer. Whereas weeks or months prior, you weren't doing that. You were really bold and really aggressive and you were giving yourself full permission to eat whatever you want and you're running straight into that fear of weight gain. That's also gonna be a really red flag. As soon as you start making those more safe, seem to be quite innocent decisions based off um, of, of where you're at in recovery thinking that you can afford to order the safe thing now because you've been in recovery long enough. No, big problem, you can't do that. You have to always be challenging yourself until you go to a restaurant and all of the things on the menu seem neutral to you and you can pick off a preference and you're certain of that. You're very confident that you can order based off of preference, not an eating disorder chatting in your head. Um, another one of those things, let's see, um, movement. So that would be another one, you know, it's surely I can go on that walk. Surely I can just, it's going to be really small walk around my neighborhood. It's going to be under 10 minutes or stretch, you know, surely I can do that stretch. I'm going to do a 10 minute stretch a couple times a week. It's going to be fine. And then that couple times a week turns into three or four times a week. And then it's 10, sometimes 15 minutes. And then 15 minutes is like no less than 15. Sometimes it's 20. Those behavior patterns, every single time are gonna get you. If you're still in active recovery and you're starting to do those things and you're trying to tell yourself you've been in recovery long enough and you should be able to implement these things now, I can almost promise you that that's going to be a big problem. You're gonna end up, whether it's days or weeks time, feeling really discouraged and really frustrated and feeling like you're not getting where, anywhere in your recovery and you're gonna start feeling uh, quite negative and down and dark and wondering, why, why do I not feel the same as I did a few weeks ago? Why am I not feeling as brave? Why are things scaring me so much? Why is the voice, why are the voices in my head? Why is the eating disorder so much louder? It seems to have such an influence on my decisions now. Well, it's because you let it back in. And so if, if you're listening to this video and you can relate to anything I'm saying, my recommendation for you is to get out a piece of paper and a pencil and start jotting down the things. These are just a few things I mentioned in this video. Start jotting down the things that you know are red flags for you, right? 
anytime you increase movement, anytime you start taking pictures of yourself, you start picking safer foods. And I'm sure the list will go on and on and on once you get going. And as you write that list down and you look at it, now your job and your responsibility is to look at that and make a boundary with yourself. I will not take any pictures of myself. I will not order the safer food when I go out. I refuse to allow that movement to creep back in. And you get really, really stern and really disciplined and just say, no, it's not happening. And the first couple days will feel really painful and hard and uncomfortable because you're kind of tearing that bandaid off again. But then eventually that'll feel normal to you again and you'll continue to progress in your rewiring and your recovery. So that's my message to you today and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.